Hello, guys. Welcome to our channel. You are right on Agapen TV. I brought you this powerful message from Apostle Michael Oropo, the greatest gift that God will give you. I came across this message and it blessed my life so much and it blessed your life as you're listening. Thank you. Now, when the outpouring begins, then we enter the second protocol, which is to engage him. And this kind of engagement is not mechanical. Because when the spirit begins to move, the first thing the spirit does is that it stirs hunger. It's that hunger that becomes a phenomenon you see in the territory. Suddenly, everybody begins to gravitate in the direction of that outpouring. People want to see. People want to know what is happening. People be, every time there's an outpouring, it affects government, it affects economy, it affects the entire population because there's a hunger in the land. Suddenly, everybody begins to seek God. The guy who is sitting in government house wants to attend the prayer meeting. When I read about the way, the revival of way, Evan Roberts, they, they, they told us they had to retrench police officers because criminals reduced in number. Even thieves became hungry for God. They could not play the World Cup because people were no longer gravitating in the direction of football. Everybody wanted to have a taste of God. And so when the outpouring begins, God begins to stir hunger. Hunger in the hearts of men. And I tell you, apart from eternal life, the second gift the Holy Ghost will bring to you is the gift of hunger. If you don't have, the, if you don't have hunger, whatever God bets will die. That's why even a child, the first gift God gives him after life is hunger. When a child is born, he begins to look for what to eat. Because if that child doesn't eat, that child will die in that hospital. If the outpouring is triggered, the Holy Ghost tears hunger. That hunger is what makes for engagement. That's why in the course of the outpouring, people pray they are no longer conscious of time. People pray they are no longer conscious of season. People pray at night. They pray in the morning. They pray in the afternoon. You know that there is an outpouring. A hunger that men can curtail. A man will sit at home and something is pulling him to the prayer house. He said, as the deer panted after the water broke. He said, so my soul longed after thee. Everywhere becomes a dry and a thirsty land. The only thing that matters is God's presence. And like the psalmist, you will say, show me thy glory. Let me see you even the way I saw you in the sanctuary. That's when we will leave our philosophies behind. We will leave our theology behind and everybody will want to meet God. Where is this one who dwells in the secret place? Like Moses, the Bible said God hid himself. Moses was still finding him. He said God dwelled in deep darkness. And he said Moses stepped into that deep darkness where God was. It doesn't matter anymore. Anywhere God is, that becomes your destination. A hunger that you cannot explain. Only God can satisfy you. Those passion now opens the second layer which is access. As men begin to press into God, what God does is that he begins to open the chambers of the spirit. It is those chambers we enter that make us begin to have encounters that empower us for the miraculous. And so you will find a vulcanizer who society considers to be useless. Suddenly while he's praying, his eyes open and he hears a word. You will feed your generation. Because he heard you will feed your generation, a wisdom will come to him. And it will start something that will turn him to a millionaire. A horn has been exalted. And from a vulcanizer, he can become a wealthy man that becomes a holder of the biggest charity in the nation. You will ask yourself, what happened when the spirit be poured upon us from on high? The scripture will now become real to you. You will find a young boy who went to that place of prayer. Suddenly, we will sense oil on his hand. He has entered access. He moved from hunger to access. And that oil on his hand, even him doesn't know what it is. But he came home and they said somebody was barren and he touched the person. He was not even praying. And the person would sense the movement. And before you know, three weeks later, she takes him. He goes home, they say somebody can't walk. He touches the person and the person starts walking. And you are wondering, what school of theology did you go to? Who taught you? Who taught you the doctrine of healing? There are things that are deeper than doctrine. Oh yeah, has touched his hand. Oh yeah. And anything that man touches begins to walk. Because when we move from hunger, we come into access. This is when the wonder generation begins to emerge. We move from faith in Christ into engaging the spirit that begins from hunger to access. If our generation don't have access, we will be theologians. Our world is not looking for people who can explain Bible only. They want people who can prove Bible. And for us to prove Bible, there must be access. 
have you prayed to that point where they touch your eyes with fire so that when you see your sight becomes like radiation you can see beyond the wall because something touched your eyes did you not read about isaiah he said in the year that king Uzziah died i saw the lord and the moment he saw the lord he began to enter the chronicles of god concerning the messiah and utter things that were not written before him how did he know something touched him something touched him our generation needs to be touched people graduate from bible school with pride they come quoting greek and hebrew it's good for teaching but the generation is not moved by the language you speak greek is like english it's like latin there are many languages the only thing the world is looking for is power is power but for power to happen we must turn it through hunger into access those your eyes can see things beyond the natural those your hands can produce things beyond the natural but you must pray into access he said have you not heard has it not been said to you that the everlasting god fainted not neither is he weary he said give it power to the faint unto them that have no might increase their strength he said even the youth shall fail and the young men shall utterly fall he said but they that wait upon the lord as you begin to engage him he says something happens to you see we are not normal creatures that's why when Paul entered heaven and he saw the believers through identity, he stopped calling us men. You know, the world thinks we are all men. And so when Christians are talking, they, they say, what are these men saying? <laughs> when the outpouring happened, they locked the disciples behind closed doors. They thought they were men. They came back the next day. The prison was locked, but they were in the temple. They went and checked. Nobody tampered with the padlock. They now can travel like the wind because Jesus said, as the wind blow it. He said, thou listest not from whence it cometh or where it goeth. He says, so are they that are born by the Spirit of God. We are not ordinary, but we have not prayed into access. We have not engaged the Holy Ghost enough. When hunger came, you truncated hunger on Facebook, chatting friends that will not add value to your life. When hunger came, you truncated hunger with a seasonal movie. When hunger came, you truncated hunger with gossip. When hunger came, you truncated hunger with bitterness. And the devil knows that something is starting on your inside. And they gang up three people and they gossip you. Instead of you to block your ears, you went and you were asking, what did she say? What did he say? Who cares what she says? Who cares what he says? I am traveling somewhere. The more they speak, the more I press. The more they fight, the more I press. My answer is not with men. My answer is in the spirit. And so when you go out today and they tell you three people were gossiping you, lift your hands and thank God. You have not started, but you are beginning to make news. Go back home and lock your door. There is a height you will get to. The people gossiping you will come back to you and say, We are sorry, disciples. Pray from hunger and enter into access. The Bible said women receive their dead back to life. This is not a prerogative of apostles. It's for everyone that believes. If widows can walk in a dimension, do you imagine what that church looked like? That when people die, they are not looking for preachers, they are looking for widows. And somebody died, they meet a widow. A widow who should be looking for food suddenly become a headquarter for raising the dead. And they are bringing dead people, and she's laying hands on them, and they are waking up. You are asking that widow, by what theology are you operating? He said, When the Spirit be poured upon us from high. If you kill your hunger, you have killed everything. Because hunger is the gateway to access. When you enter access, that's when your reality will be born. He said, they that wait upon the Lord, they mount up with wings like the eagles. That's why I told you we are not normal. If you see your shape in the spirit, you become afraid of yourself. The Bible said we were fearfully and wonderfully made. When Paul saw us, he said, this man, it will be an error to call them men. He now created a name called New Creatures. Because all of us are different in the spirit. In the natural, we all have two ears, two eyes, one nose, one mouth, two hands and two legs. In the spirit, some of us had wings. That's why when you start a business, business that takes people 10 years, in three months, you have surpassed everybody. And they are wondering, what are you doing? Wings. They mount up with wings like the eagle. Some of us have horns. He said, my horn have thou exalted like the horn of the unicorn. You have anointed me with fresh oil. When the outpouring come, your horn appears. That horn is the authority that you have. You now see a boy of 14 years addressing elders. And you are wondering, by what authority is the outpouring? When the outpouring comes, your ancient shape 
the dimension of God you carry begin to manifest. Some of you who don't wear clothes in the spirit, you wear fire. But it will take the outpouring for a war to know. And so when you rise up, every time you talk, your voice becomes like the voice of the seraphims. And so when God wants to pour a generation of iniquity, he sends you there. And as you are talking, the criminal is crying, the murderer is crying, the bandit is crying. Even you don't know what is happening. Your tongue has been touched. The outpouring has come. Some of us carry dimensions that are heavenly. But it will take the outpouring for your horn to appear. And so we pray from hunger into access. I will not wait. I will pray. I will pray. I will pray. Thank God for the outpouring. But there's a responsibility of engagement. Of engagement. I will pray. I will pray. I will pray. I will pray. Oh, I will pray. If I don't pray, since I will make oh, mess of me. I don't want to go to heaven and discover I pray. that I have wings, but I never flew I on earth. I don't want to go to heaven and discover that I have a element of fire, but I never born. Set a we make mess of me. Set a we make mess of me. Set a we make mess of me. I will pray. I will pray. If I don't pray, set a we make mess of me.